Hello friends, in this short video series, we will look at a Python library called TS Fresh. Okay, it stands for Time Series Feature Extraction based on scalable hypothesis tests. Uh, that's a mouthful, but basically what it does is given a time series or sequence of data points, it engineer hundreds of even thousand uh, uh, features. Okay, now these features are based on uh, the input uh, data. Uh, it computes the statistics, some time series analysis, signal processing, nonlinear dynamics, etc. Okay, so it apply the principles uh, uh, or methods from uh, these four and uh, other uh, methods to engineer new features automatically. Okay. It's a very, very useful library. Uh, it has received over 7,000 stars on GitHub. Uh, I have used it uh, in my projects. Uh, it's actually quite uh, good. Okay, so all we need to do is uh, install uh, this TS Fresh. Uh, you can do that using pip install. Okay. Um, from TS Fresh, uh, we'll install import a couple of modules. Uh, so this extract features, uh, this extract the features and select features as i mentioned it extracts up to thousand features from a given time series okay or sequence of points now some of those features uh, might be correlated to each other some of them might not have any useful information etc right so it also has an inbuilt function called select features uh, using which we can find out which features are useful okay and then this third method, it basically combines these two steps. So it does both the feature extraction and the selections uh, in one go. Okay. Uh, then it has some utility functions, for example, how to uh, impute the missing values, etc. And this comprehensive FC parameters, uh, what it does is it control uh, which param which features uh, get created. For example, let's say. Uh, we have some domain expertise about our time series, right? Let's say it's some sensor data. Uh, we know it uh, it follows some principles from signal processing. Then using this parameter, uh, we can control uh, so that uh, it will generate only signal processing related features. Okay. Um, but in this uh, uh, tutorial, we'll go with the default so that we can see uh, all the features. All right. Uh, then here we are importing uh, a couple of uh, scikit-learn uh, functions, uh, the modules. Now our focus is not to build a great machine learning model, but once we extract the data or the features, uh, we'll uh, quickly build a model uh, to see how it's uh, doing. Okay. All right. Now, yeah, let's start with the data set. Uh, so here we have this uh, robot execution failure data set and this notebook is taken from the github uh, i'll provide the link below so that you can go to this url to learn more about the data uh, basically uh, we have uh, some 88 robots and uh, each robot uh, execution either it is passed or failed okay and then we have recorded a bunch of metrics which is this force uh, three values and the torque three values okay we have recorded these values uh, for 15, uh, we don't have the frequency, but 15 data points. For example, if you look at here, so this is robot number one. As you can see, uh, this is robot number one. So we have recorded uh, the values at 15 timestamps, uh, fx, fy, fz, as well as the force and torque value uh, in all three directions, okay? and so this robot either it might it may have failed or passed uh, that we can find out from the target variable y okay and then here we have second robot uh, here we can see five uh, timestamps data uh, because here we are printing only 20 so the first 15 for the first robot but you can see uh, for every robot we have 15 timestamps of data of uh, six variables okay so that's how the data is now let's say we want to build a machine learning model which can classify if the robot uh, 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 is failed or passed uh, based on uh, these features okay 
now we know in order to build a machine learning model uh, we need to have one row per robot right one record per robot now we cannot use this uh, data in this format for uh, building or training any machine learning models we need only one row per robot right so essentially what we are going to do is for each robot for example this one we are going to transform these 15 rows of data into one row for example we are going to use these 15 x values uh, into one row the way we do that is by doing feature engineering for example we might take hey what is the minimum value during these uh, during this period or the maximum value the standard deviations etc etc right um, any statistics you can think of the mean modes etc and maybe we can we can we can do a Fourier uh, a discrete Fourier fit and we can take the the quotients the amplitudes frequencies etc etc okay so that's what we are going to do so every robot record we are going to transform it into a single record right single row all right that's what we are going to do so as i mentioned here we have uh, the target variable y uh, which is either uh, uh, true or false meaning it's a whether it is failed or passed okay um all right uh, here we are just uh, plotting some data uh, so for a robot number three and robot number 20 uh, number three uh, it's a success example and number 20 it's a failure example okay now um, again we are not going to train an excellent machine learning model and uh, exploring this data is not important but this is just to give you an understanding in what format we have the data and what's our target format going to be okay all right yep so let's come here so here uh, we are using this function extract features uh, we simply supply our data frame now the data frame should be structured in a way that it should have id column okay so what it does is for each id for each unique id it's going to build it's going to use all the data for that id and it will build a one row or record right one record per id okay so we'll specify the column id uh, which is id in our case and uh, uh, we want to sort these by time uh, because this is supposed to be time series data and uh, in case if the data uh, is jumbled up so we want to sort using this timestamp column in an actual time series data we might have the actual timestamp rather than these uh, serial numbers okay um, all right and then uh, if you don't specify uh, it will create features uh, for all the columns uh, except these two right and if you want to create features for a specific column let's say we want to build a model only using let's say tarkx so there we can specify uh, just use a tx to build the features but by default we are going to build the features for all these six columns okay all right now as i mentioned before uh, we can control what sort of features uh, gets built so as we saw at the beginning of the notebook uh, this library it build features based on the concepts from statistics nonlinear dynamics uh, signal processing and uh, what's the fourth one uh, time series analysis right so uh, if we know our data well and uh, we want to use uh, a particular type of features uh, we can control that using uh, this uh, comprehensive fc parameter but here we are uh, going uh, by default meaning all features which this library can compute are computed okay uh, that's it so it will take some time uh, because lots of computer calculations are involved here and then now we look at uh, x is equal to uh, uh, head of the data frame now here you'll see each record corresponds to one robot okay so each record corresponds to one robot and then uh, for each robot uh, we know whether it is success or failure so now we have prepared the data uh, so that we can train a machine learning model and uh, as 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 we uh, as we saw we have converted this let's say some tall form of data or the time series data uh, into 
a wider form of data okay so for each uh, robot id now we have 400 and 4696 features okay so okay i'll 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 show the features created using one of the variables uh, so i'm just taking these x columns uh, so i'm taking all these columns and i'm printing if it has uh, fx so what it does is our data frame it has these six columns right fx fy fz uh, tx ty tz four sign tasks now it will take the columns one by one for each column for example fx it will create a bunch of features so that's what we are seeing here so for fx it's saying variance larger than standard deviation so from those 15 data points uh, it's computing is the variation larger than the standard deviation is this has uh, a duplicate max does it have a duplicate min right so these are the sorts of features it creates so some of them either the binary yes or no so you can see zeros or ones uh, but some these can be okay well, what are the sum of the values the mean uh, median modes uh, etc okay so that's how it looks like so here uh, we are printing the features which are derived from the force in the x direction so as you can see here so here we have variance larger than standard deviation duplicates some values uh, the mean absolute ch uh, change the mean change uh, the length of the array uh, the standard deviation uh, skew curtos so all these at the beginning uh, those are uh, statistics based which are easy to understand and then as we as we go down uh, we'll see a lot based on uh, uh, the signal processing and this nonlinear dynamics concepts okay if you want you can uh, you can look at the manual uh, to understand what these uh, uh, all are so at the end we are printing how many features are created using this uh, single fx variable okay so here we have 783 now this value changes with the version of the library now with with the new versions they are adding more and more features so in the latest version uh, you might see some more features added okay so for each variable we have created or extracted uh, 783 new vari new features now we have six features right six variables so six multiplied by 783 uh, that has created uh, 4600 plus features okay so i hope it's clear now essentially what we did is for each robot id we have taken one column at a time and from that one column we have these 15 values we have used these 15 values to engineer uh, some close to 800 features and we repeated the same process for all six features so we end up with some 4800 close to features okay so that's what we have here now uh, we know i mean many of these features uh, could be uh, correlated uh, with each other uh, may not have any variation or uh, may not be useful or just some random noise right so we want to reduce the number of features otherwise the machine get uh, the model gets overfit and uh, we don't get any insights from the model feature explainability etc also become quite difficult right so we have another module called select features um, uh, offered by this library now what we do is we input all the features uh, we ha we just have created uh, 4600 and we also uh, give the a target variable so what it does is it evaluate all these features one by one against uh, this target variable to find out how good that feature is in predicting uh, the target variable right it does the feature uh, selection and some hypothesis technique uh, techniques under the hood and it will return only those ones which are found to be useful in predicting the target variable okay so as you can see x filter uh, it has only 6682 rows so we are down from some 4600 to just uh, close to 700 uh, features okay so it does the feature uh, selection as well now let's quickly build a model again uh, the focus is not uh, to train an ml model so we are doing the usual stuff uh, we take the data 
we split it into train and test. Uh, this is our original features, which are 4,600 uh, and our target variable. Uh, we are splitting the 60 to 40 ratio, a uh, train and test, right? And then, um, so here uh, we are building another data set uh, using uh, the filtered feature, which are about uh, this uh, 700, right? We are doing exactly the same. Now we build a model using uh, all the features and because, uh, okay, so here we have got uh, uh, the precision recall and the F1 scores for the model, right? And then that's using all the 4,800 some plus features. And here we are using only the filtered features, okay? So as you can see here, we are training the model using only the filtered features, which are about, uh, uh, which are about uh, some 700. Uh, as you can see this time, we have much better precision and recall. I mean, it seems like this data set is easy to distinguish between success and failure. Uh, we have uh, very good accuracies, okay? We have almost 100% accuracies. Uh, all right, so uh, this is good. That means the filtering or the feature selection process is working. Uh, we don't, uh, we are throwing away all the unnecessary features uh, just by using 700 features. Uh, we are getting much better model as compared to using all the 4,000 uh, plus features, okay? So the selection process is working well. Uh, now, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we have another method which combine both the steps. So it extract the relevant features and it filter them as well. So it, it extract the features and then filter for the relevant ones, okay? Uh, all right, we are doing exactly the same thing. But this time, as you can see, uh, this X filtered uh, two, uh, that's the feature set we have created. Now here we are using set operation uh, just to compute if, if the features we got by filtering here are exactly the same as the second method where the feature extraction as well as filtering happened at the same time. So as you can see, uh, 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 they are the same, okay? so. Up to you, either you can use this function directly or you may want to build all the features and then you might want to use your own methods of uh, feature selection. Okay, I'll quickly summarize. Uh, so basically using this library, uh, we can build or engineer a number of features, hundreds, even thousands of features for a given time series data or sequence of points. So here we have a robot ID and we have collected 15 points or 15 uh, timestamps data. Now we have used these 15 points uh, to build around 800 features. We did the same for all these six columns. So essentially we have converted this time series or tall form of data into a much wider form of the data, uh, which is one record per uh, machine ID uh, so that we can train a machine learning model. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you very much. Now, by the way, uh, one important concept here is uh, the feature selection uh, method uh, we have used, uh, which is this one. It only works for uh, the binary. So this method, it only works for the binary classification or regression. So in the next video, we will see uh, how to deal uh, when we have uh, multi-class classification. Okay, so here our target variable y, uh, it is either success or failure. So it's a binary one, right? So in the next video, we will see how we handle uh, when it is multi-class. Uh, thank you very much.